Good day to you. My name is Chelsea. Welcome. In my experience, connecting with a surgeon that you feel comfortable with is an extremely important step in your journey. However, like in my case, they may not be the very first surgeon you meet. Today, I'm going to share with you the process that took me from feeling completely lost and powerless to comfortable and confident with my surgery care team. I will share my mistakes and offer suggestions to help you connect with your surgery team in a more streamlined fashion than I did. In the same appointment that I received my cancer diagnosis, I was given a referral to a surgeon in our area. Up until that point in my life, I hadn't put a lot of thought into my breasts and really what it meant to have them. I didn't aim to show them or hide them they were just kind of there. It didn't hit me until I was at risk of losing them what it really meant to have my breasts and the role they played as a part of my body. They were given to me with the possibility of providing nourishment to the future family that my husband and I have only had the chance to talk about. They were how I was created and they were mine. At the risk of losing parts of my breasts or all of them, I felt an attachment to protect them even though they had something unhealthy growing within. Because of this newfound appreciation for my breasts and my body in general, it was extremely important to me to have a surgery care team that I felt a connection with, understood my needs, and I felt very comfortable with. Within a week, I received the call to meet with the surgeon. I was anxious, I was apprehensive, and basically I just wanted to feel like my body was going to be taken care of. The surgeon was very compassionate and I'm sure very skilled at their profession. However, in my body, in my gut, in my mind, just everything felt so wrong. I remember walking out of that first appointment and bursting into tears. I felt so completely lost. I felt trapped and I felt optionless. I knew this wasn't the right fit for me, but I didn't know if I had any other option. Before I left, I worked up the courage to ask the surgeon for referral to somebody else. This wasn't easy for me to do. I felt like it was wrong to ask to see somebody else. I felt like I should have been grateful for this opportunity to meet the surgeon, which I was, and I felt like I would hurt their feelings. But with all of that aside, I knew that I had to ask because it wasn't a good fit. And this is my body, my journey. I knew that I needed to find another solution. Thankfully, that first surgeon did put in a referral to see somebody else. I had another chance to find my right fit. This surgeon, I very much trusted. He performed an ultrasound at my first visit. He was up to date and interested in current and ongoing research. And he very clearly laid out the options that I had before me after doing a thorough consultation. He was a great match. There was just one problem. He is specifically trained at the removal of the cancer from the body. However, he is not trained in the second half of the surgery, which is the reconstruction process. Up until that point, I had absolutely no idea that two surgeons were required to complete the procedure. Now with one surgeon confirmed, I needed to find a reconstruction specialist for the second part of the surgery. Knowing how much wind the wrong fit took out of my sails in my first appointment, I knew I needed to approach this process with more care and purpose than the first time. This time I enlisted some help in my lead researcher of my support team, my sister, and we decided to do some digging to find a surgeon that was right for me. We looked into past patient reviews and we made sure that the next surgeon was able to perform the reconstruction surgery that I had in the back of my mind that was going to be the right one for me. I was thankful to be able to secure 
an appointment with a surgeon who ticked all of the boxes of the things that I believed I needed in a surgery care team. After an examination and a consultation, this reconstruction surgeon recommended a specific surgery for me. Unfortunately, this is not a surgery that I had in mind and it didn't resonate with what I saw as something that would work for my body and my future. And he told me that any other option would not work for me. Once again, I left this appointment in tears. I left feeling like my back was up against the wall without any options, absolutely hopeless and fearing for what surgery meant for my current body, my future body and the use of it. I remember a conversation I had with a survivor friend of mine and she was saying that she was extremely happy with the connection she had with her surgeon and happy with the results. I wondered if this surgeon could be an option for me. Pretty much instantly, my hopes were sky high. However, I was trying to keep them grounded for a few reasons. First of all, this surgeon is located about five hours from the city that I live in. So that meant that she was in a different health district. And I didn't know if I could get a referral from my health district to hers. Secondly, when I looked online, her reviews were very good and she had a lot of experience under her belt. So I didn't know if her long waiting list would coincide with the time sensitive needs of removing the cancer. And thirdly, seeing her would mean that I would now again need to find another cancer removal surgeon to connect with her in this new city, in this new health district, and that just seemed like a lot for me to organize. At this point in my journey, I was halfway through chemotherapy. I was exhausted and I was basically just trying to survive the day. But I knew this surgery would affect me for the rest of my life and I didn't want to settle for something that didn't feel right. So I needed help. Once again, I called on the support of my sister who made many, many, many calls on my behalf. And finally, an appointment was secured. Traveling to see this reconstructive surgeon wasn't easy and it wasn't convenient, but it was well worth it. After learning about me, my specific case, and knowing that I thrive on being active, she recommended a surgery plan that resonated with what I had in mind. Instead of being pushed into a corner, I felt that we exchanged information and together we made a plan that made the most sense for me. She understood my need and desire to continue to be active and feel as me as possible. With her, I felt heard, I felt comfortable, and I felt reassured. After that very first appointment, I felt optionless and powerless. I felt as though my body was no longer mine and what I wanted to do with it no longer mattered. In Canada, we are extremely fortunate to be provided healthcare and I am beyond grateful for that. However, this in part made me feel like I did not have a voice with my surgery care team and it made me feel like I should take what I was given, even if it didn't feel right. Now, looking back, I am so darn thankful that I had the strength and the wherewithal to ask for that second referral, to continue pushing, to find a surgeon and a surgery team that was the right fit for me, my body, and my future. Let's take a moment to do a quick recap to help you create your ideal surgery team. I would recommend doing a little preliminary research before you head to your specialist appointment, looking into the various surgery options available. That way, when you're in the appointment, you can focus on your questions as well as gaining a relationship with the surgeon. I actually created a whole video on tackling appointments. I'll add a tag for you above. Feel free to seek another opinion. If I had moved forward with what the first surgeon I saw 
or the first reconstruction surgeon I saw had recommended, I know I would have been extremely regretful. Different surgeons will have different specialized training and experiences. So if the first recommendation isn't resonating with you, don't be afraid to ask for a second opinion as it just might be exactly what you want. If the first surgeon you see isn't a good fit for you, don't be afraid to ask for somebody else. And when you do, come with somebody in mind. Do a little bit of research into reviews, past client experiences, and making sure that that surgeon can do the surgery that you want. Different people have different specialties. It doesn't mean that someone is better than someone else. It just means that it's different. The journey to connect with my surgery team was a tough one. It took extra time, it was extra stress, and it added extra expenses on top of everything else. But in the end, I am so thankful that I put in all that extra for the end result that's going to last me a lifetime. Our bodies are sacred and they're ours. They play a massive role in how we get to live the rest of our lives. In my opinion, collaborating with a surgeon that combines both your needs with their expertise to create a result specifically designed for you is an invaluable connection that will not only benefit you in the present, but in the future. I hope that today you are able to learn from my mistakes and provided insights to create a surgery care team that you truly feel a connection with and you feel comfortable with. Thank you so much for being here with me today. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to join me again next time for more surgery insights, hit subscribe and the notifications bell. I wish you all the best. Take care and we'll see you next time.